Welcome to Driver 38 Knives. This week we're going to be looking at a custom AM Mayhaw custom knife maker, handmade knife maker from Counts, Tennessee. Uh, we're going to look at this knife up close on the tailgate. I'm going to tell you what little information I've got about it and how I come about this knife. Okay, let's get to looking at this knife here. Okay, today we're gonna to be looking at a, a custom handmade AM Mayhaw. And this is a very interesting knife. And uh, first let's look at the, let's get a good look at the knife and the construction and stuff. And then I'll share with you what little research I found on this knife. And uh, I'll tell you how I came across this knife, came into possession of it. Okay, let's get to talking about the, the construction of this knife. Uh, I have never seen a knife quite like this. Uh, I've never seen a pattern quite like this. Uh, it's got two full grown blades coming off one bolster here like a like a trapper okay so let's compare it to a trapper now here's a full-size trapper and as you can see it's uh not quite as long and it also has a bow shape in it but it does have two full-size blades coming off the same bolster like a pattern trapper does. Let's see about a mini trapper. This here's a mini trapper. It's more akin to uh, a mini trapper size. Uh, let's put a tape on it. At its widest point It'd be just under three and a half. Okay. One of the interesting things about this knife, it has stag handles. Okay. And it is super, super stout uh, thick. Check this out. Check this back out. Now, let me, let's put this in perspective. Let, right here's a buck 110. And it is quite a bit wider than a buck 110. Definitely wider than a case trapper. This is super, super heavy built. Okay. Blades are pretty close to centered on it. And the stag here has been jigged kind of like a second cut jig. It is three rows of three in a line front and back. It has a shield pretty close to the center. And the maker's name on the shield, A.M. Mayhaw. Okay. I don't know what these blades are made out of, but I'm I'm mean, thinking it's some kind of stainless because they, there was no tainers on this and it's very old. Okay, this blade here is very interesting. It doesn't look like a trapper blade. It's very comparable to a Barlow blade. See what I mean? Let's 
Got handmade on a tang with a capital G in the middle. The second blade is a razor blade. Got the cut out here. It has nothing on the tang of it. Now this steel, this knife was pretty dull when I got it. And this steel was very easy to sharpen. Very easy to sharpen. I mean, it was no time and I had an edge on this. So that's interesting for a stainless steel. Stainless steel usually takes more effort than what I put out to get the edge on this. So I, I'm really, really uh, interested in what, what this is made out of. Now one thing about this knife, on a scale of one to 10 on the pull, this is like a 11. This is the hardest pulling knife I've ever ever picked up. I mean, it's a it's a nail puller. Listen to this. Both blades are, are that way, tight. I mean. That's the tightest pull I've ever pulled. Matter of fact, uh, whoever had this knife before me, I'm 90% sure that's the reason they got rid of it. Because it was so hard to open. Hard on a fingernail, hard on a finger. It takes some effort to get the blades open. This razor here, there's no way you're going to hang that on your leg or anything to get that open. I mean, it takes some effort to get it open. That's not going to come open one-handed. Even though it is designed for that, it's not going to happen. Uh, the stag looks pretty good. Now, when I got this knife, I cleaned it up, and uh, I put it in a mineral oil bath for about two hours. And the stag came back. It was pretty. It was a lot wider and not much color to it till I did that. And it looks it looks good now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the research I found on this knife. Uh, this A M Mayhall was a custom knife maker from Counts, Tennessee. Uh, during the 60s and 70s is when he made his knives. Uh, he passed away in 1980. And uh, it says that most of his knives were sold at the Acorn Knife Shop in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And that store has been uh, closed and gone since before 2010. So, um, also on another site, it said that the tang stamps didn't start till 1970. So this knife may have been made after 1970. I don't know. It may have been before then. I've, I've searched, Google searched and images and stuff, and I've only found one knife that looks like this. And where the razor is here, it had a spear point. And it also had handmade, but it didn't have the, the G. And I also found pictures of Stockman's and one blades. They didn't have this. They had one M with like horns coming off of it. And may haul in under it. A M with like wings and then Mayhaw. So I don't know if this is a one-off, one of a kind, an experiment. I don't know. But I, I have not found anything that even looks like it. So 
Okay. Let's talk about how I come about this now. Uh, I had a little, a little uh, special thing going on a couple weeks ago, and uh, a special little celebration thing. I'm not gonna go into that. And uh, my sister wanted to get me something for that. So she stopped by an antique store and she saw this in there and uh, the guy told her it was a Pakistan knife. It had stag handles on it, but he, he it was a Pakistan knife. And he opened it up and let her look at it. And when she seen handmade on it, this is what she told me. When she seen handmade on it, she figured it would be a knife that I didn't have. Something I didn't already have. So she got it. Didn't pay much for it at all. Uh, brought it to me and I looked at it and uh, I knew right away it was not a Pakistan knife. And I done some Google searching on it and that's where I come up with the information I've got now. Uh, plus, I, I texted some of my Knife Brotherhood friends and, and they gave me some information on it also. But it, it is a, a well-made knife. And uh, also they said that custom knife makers in the 60s and 70s, uh, they left their knives kind of crude looking. Uh, kind of uh, rugged looking. I'll put it that way. And uh, this one is that. Uh, I can't get over the thickness on this thing. And the back springs are a little recessed there. That may be why they're so powerful. I'm, I'm not sure. But it's really a nail grabber. I've oiled it, tried to work it, and uh, it's still tight, tight, tight. Okay, I'm coming up on 12 minutes now, so I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, if anybody knows anything about this knife or, or AM May Hall or the Acorn Knife Shop or anything, Counts Tennessee, anybody knows anything about that, please leave a comment. I'm, I'm really interested in this knife. Thank you. Thank y'all for looking at my custom handmade knife here. Uh, y'all, please leave a comment. I want to hear what y'all got to say about it. Next week, we'll have another knife to look at.